This video is on connector types. There are a variety of connectors associated with cabling, and there are several ways of connecting them. Let's talk fiber first. First, we have local connector. Local connectors have flange on top for secure connection. Then we have straight tip, which uses half twist bayonet type of lock. Next, we have subscriber connector. It uses a push pull connector. And then we have mechanical transfer register jack. This is a connector for two fibers in a very small form factor. And lastly, we have fiber channel. This have threaded body and are used in environments where vibration is a problem. Within the various type of connectors, you can choose to purchase ones that are either angled physical contact APC or ultra physical contract UPC. The main difference between the two is the fiber end phase or the angle. APC connectors feature a fiber end phase that is polished at an 8 degree angle. UPC connectors are polished with no angle. UPC connectors are not exactly flat, however, they do have a slight curvature for better core alignment. Some applications are more sensitive to return loss, and that's where AP connectors shine. For instance, in higher wavelength range like those used for RF video signals. For other applications where return loss is not paid much attention to, UPC comes into play. UPC is popular in digital TV, telephony, and data systems. One thing that should be noted is that APC and UPC connectors cannot and should not be mated. Not only does this cause poor performance, but it can also destroy both connectors. The last thing you want to do is cause permanent damage. Now let's get into copper cables. Let's talk RJ11 and RJ45. RJ11 connectors are small plastic connectors used on telephone cables. They have capacity for six small pins, but most cases, not all pins are used. For example, a standard telephone connection uses only two pins, and a cable used for DSL modem connection uses four. RJ45 looks just like RJ11, but they support up to eight wires instead of six supported by RJ11 connectors. Next, we have F-type connector. F-type connectors are screw-on connection used to attach coaxial cable to devices. F-type connectors usually have a nut on the connection that provides something to grip as the connection is tightened by the hand. Now let's talk transceivers and media converters. On routers, small form factor pluggable modules and gigabit interface converter modules are often used to link a gigabit Ethernet port with fiber network. Both SFP and GBICs exist for technologies other than fiber, but connecting to fiber has become most common. With either SFP or GBIC, there is a receiver port and transmitter port. These devices are static sensitive as well as dust sensitive, and dirty connectors can cause intermittent problems. Care should be taken to not remove them often, because moving them often will shorten their life. After a module goes bad, they can be swapped for a new one to resolve the problem. Signal loss can not only occur from unclean connectors, but also from connector mismatch, improper alignment, and differences in core diameters contribute to signal loss. When you troubleshoot SFP or GBIC, you should make sure that you do not have a cable mismatch or bad cable transceiver. Just verify that you're using single mode fiber with single mode interface and a multi mode fiber cable for multi mode interface. When you do have two dissimilar type of network media, a media converter is used to allow them to connect. They are sometimes referred to as couplers. Depending on conversion being done, the converter can be small device barely larger than the connectors themselves, or a large device with the sizable chassis. Reasons for not using the same media throughout the network and thus reasons for needing a converter can range from cost, disparate segments, or needing to run a particular media in a setting. There are four form factors that you need to know for the Network Plus exam. The original is SFP. SFP stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable. Connectors were originally designed to take up less space in a crowded networks to allow for higher traffic density. They run an LC interface and are half the size of preceding GBIC form factor. SFP transceiver modules support sonnet, gigabit ethernet, fiber channel, and other common interfaces. They manage traffic from 1 to 10 gigabits per second across copper and fiber cables. This makes SFP one of the most versatile connectors on the market. Then we have SFP+. SFP+, takes the benefit of SFP design and improves on their data capacity. 
SFP connections can hit speeds up to 32 gigabits per second. And then we have QSFP, another expansion on the SFP concept. It uses double fiber pairs. Q stands for quad. Additional pair allows for substantially more powerful data transmission. QSFP connectors are still small and hot pluggable, and they still support Ethernet and fiber optics. Added to the supported list is InfiniBand. And lastly, we have QSFP+. Plus. This is the modern incarnation of QSFP, and in most data centers, it has completely replaced its predecessors. QSFP Plus can reach speeds of 10 gigabits per second per line, and this makes it a 40 gig connection type that still maintains the small form factor that is essential to so many network designs. The latest events on QSFP connections is QSFP 28, it expands on the transmission rate per line, and it can easily get throughput beyond 100 gig. Thank <laughs> you.